Welcome to Jack Fleming Artistry. In this video, I am accepting a challenge from Freddie Via over at Via Pinstriping and show you guys what we're doing. Stick around towards the end too because I'm going to challenge him as well and find out what it is I'm going to challenge him with. Go check out his channel, uh, Via Pinstriping, and let's go ahead and get started on this panel. Okay, so the challenge that Freddie issued me is to do at least eight colors on a pinstriping panel. I've pulled all my colors out of my box. I've got them pushed up a little bit here for you. I've got to select some colors. Normally I stick to like three or four colors most in most of my designs. I haven't spent a whole lot of time doing this many colors. So it's definitely a challenge for me. I've done maybe three or four panels ever really that have this many colors in them. I thought this was a good opportunity to do a five minute or less lesson in color theory, just so I can tell you what my game plan is on this. So let me show you some stuff. All right, one of the things that I think is most important whenever you're doing striping and laying colors and stuff out, and I know a lot of other people, some more experienced people and stuff that I know have said this a lot, and I see some people that kind of disregard it, so teach their own in a way but to me it's really important um value value whenever i talk about that i'm talking about light to dark one end of the spectrum is going to be black the opposite of black is going to be white right um the middle of that is going to be gray whenever we are putting lines on a dark panel which i'm going to do this on a black panel if i have white lines and gray over the top of it, it's going to intersect. It's going to make that white line look choppy. So I like to stack, if I'm on top of a dark color, I like to stack my colors dark to light, light being the last thing that I use. Really quick, another part of that is going to be the color side of it. So we've got value, we've also got hue. When we talk about hue, we're talking about the colors of the rainbow, red, yellow, blue, our primary colors. Our other colors are like green and orange and what most people call purple. I like to say violet. Um, you know, blue and red make violet or purple. Yellow and red make orange. Move some of these out of the way. And we get green from yellow and blue. If you look at these and think about what I just showed you with dark to light, these kind of work light and come around to dark. Red and green are usually kind of equal to each other. So I can make another value scale that looks about like this, as far as dark to light. These up here for you all a little bit more. So in doing a panel, if I was to use these colors on a black panel, I would start with blue, then I would do my violet. Eh, I might flip those. Violet might be a little bit darker. So I do my violet, then my blue, red and green can kind of go either way because they're really about the same light-wise. We could say though that green is a cool color and put it on that side because cool colors tend to recede, meaning they pull to the back, and warm colors tend to come forward. So I could do my panel with these colors, but I think what I really want to do is pick colors that I really like to start with and and some of my favorite colors to work with are dark magenta, I love, I love working with. I also really like working with teal. So I think if I base it off of these to kind of get started, I can come up with something that I like. Um, probably put some more cool colors in. Green kind of looks decent with those. I like purple. I might do another blue. It's going to be a lot of cool colors. I got to go with at least eight, so that's five. I could... I don't know that I really like red with those, but I do like orange. I do like yellow. Um, what is that? Four, seven. This is always a fun one. I don't know if it's going to fit here definitely lighter it might be up here on this end what is that three six that's eight I'm gonna play around with these a little bit and maybe sleep on it and see what I come up with but 
think I definitely want to use maybe these colors right here and we'll build off of that. Maybe we add in white, maybe we add in gray. I'm not sure yet, we'll figure it out. I thought I had it figured out yesterday. I went ahead and took a break from figuring out colors. I feel like I'm already letting this get to me, but we're not gonna let it get to us anymore. I'm gonna go with these colors. I'm gonna go ahead and get started working. I've got something that I've been wanting to try and I'm gonna show you guys. Okay, this is something that I've known about and I've even told other people about, but I haven't actually done myself. And that is cutting the design through the film that is on the sign panel and then going ahead and doing, in this case, I'm doing a blend, but I've seen people use this for doing leaf work and other stuff. And then when I'm done, after I've got my blend, peeling that off, um, just leaving a mask there basically. So let's see how that turns out. I know I did a blend and what I'm going to do is peel this film. I'm going to let it dry for a minute. But uh, I actually kind of like just the crazy haphazardness of this. I might have to do another panel where I do something that's like that with a real kind of live edge to it and then stripe over it with something totally different. That might be kind of cool. But let this dry for a minute. Peel this film. It might end up having some rough edges. doesn't really matter because we'll outline them. But I think I'm going to be kind of happy for this as the middle. Ooh, I think this is going to be fun to work on. I like it. I think I'll probably outline this first, maybe with my teal, or maybe with aqua. I'll figure it out. All right, right now I'm gonna outline the center piece. Before doing that, I went ahead and taped off where I'm gonna put a border. Um, kind of planning ahead there. I wanna know how much space I have as I come farther out from this. But I'm going to go ahead and get this color. This is not going to be the first color that I really do a lot of design work with. But I know it's going to go on top of some other colors. And I think I want it to be kind of my middle sort of color. I'll speed this up. Outline this. Um, we'll see where it goes from here. We've had some rainy days here. So you can tell on these videos I'm actually... Taking a little bit more time figuring out the um, paladin and stuff on this to get the paint just right. I also had to stop and put some chalk on my fingers. That humidity in the air is one of those things that you got to factor in sometimes. And speeding this up lets you see the whole process on that without it taking too gratefully long. So appreciate y'all's patience. Hang in there. All right. I guess, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about theory here on stuff, what my game plan is. I don't know what I'm doing when it comes to doing this many colors, but I've got a game plan. Starting with my darkest color out of my lineup, which is proper purple. It is the closest to black. You kind of see it kind of blends in. So I'm going to put it in the back. And I think what the game plan is going to be is to try and keep it super simple and super open so that I leave room for all the other colors and all the other designs and I don't know we'll see how it turns out I got no clue at the moment nothing drawn off I might start drawing stuff off as I go I don't know but here we go first color you can notice here one of the things I do a lot of times is I go ahead and paint one side and then I draw off the right side of the design. That's because I'm usually a little low and a little flat on the right hand side of my designs. Uh, I don't think it's cheating, it's just making sure it looks good. Of 
quick model of mine. If I don't like it, I wipe it. <laughs> I didn't like it. A little bit too busy. I'm going to try and go a little bit simpler. It's also really hard for me to see this purple with the way the lights are in my shop because there's a whole lot of glare and it's really close to the black. So I'm going to try again. First color is done. Maybe if I show you guys by letting the glare hit it, you can kind of see. I kept it super duper simple. Um, trying to leave a lot of room for a lot of other colors. This was a really challenging color for me to do because that proper purple does not show up very well on black and the glare was messing with me. Uh, we'll see what happens with the second color. Right, I've kind of been way too in my head on this, but I let that dry. I had to go home yesterday. I'm putting this in in between jobs, so it kind of makes it easy to work on one color at a time. I decided because I don't know mentally, I feel like there's a lot of uh, let's see, chess game going on with this piece for me. It's probably me being in my head too much, but I decided to go ahead and draw this out. What I was going to do with the next color here. I don't feel like I have enough bones yet on this to uh, really be just kind of going at it free, being that I'm out of my comfort zone. I see nothing wrong with drawing stuff off, especially if you're out of your comfort zone. Often when I'm working on cars, I don't draw anything off. It's just kind of on the fly. Maybe I draw, well, usually I draw a center line. And a lot of times I draw my right side after I've finished my left side. Just because I know my personal limitations is that I have a hard time on the right side not being a little flat. And also not being a little low. But I'm gonna go ahead here and knock out this next color. Again, I am working as far as value is concerned. And when I say value, I mean dark to light. I'm working darker first. And it kinda so happens that for the most part with this piece, that means I'm also working with cooler colors first. So I'm gonna put this on hyperlapse, finish this up, and then uh, we'll see how long it takes before I move on to the next color. One of the things you can already start to see happening a little bit in this is that the proper purple is sort of just disappearing into the background, which is actually kind of nice in the end because then you end up with this last little detail that you really got to look at to see. I at least like stuff like that. Uh, one game plan that I do whenever I'm putting additional colors on top of other ones, personally, I really look at where they intersect each other. I, I like things to intersect as close to a 90 as I can. Or is it a 45? No less than a 45. I don't really like acute angles in my stuff, but that's just me. This is where it's looking like at the moment. I am tired of looking at this orange tape that I put down for a border, so I'm going to go ahead and do my border so I can peel the orange tape off and then start figuring out the rest of it. Right now that orange is kind of messing with my eye as far as color schemes we're going to get it out of there i do want to put some orange in this but that's starting to dictate how i'm going with colors and i don't like it so let's go ahead and get the border i'm actually going to try something i've been wanting to try for a while i'm going to do a chisel border and i'm using tape to help me figure that out so i'm going to get that going and peel that orange tape off and then go with the next colors oh i gotta say a big thank you to freddie because i 
glad he challenged me on this. I haven't done a fine art panel in a while, and it's one of my favorite things to do. It gives me the opportunity to experiment and try new things. So you're getting to see a lot of things I've been thinking about, wanting to do, and now we're putting them in action. Mess around and find out, right? I ended up not recording the last color or two on this. It progressed an awful lot really quick. I still have a few colors to go on it. Um, technically, I'm only counting this as five colors. So far, I've already dabbled into a few of the other colors. I feel like it's getting busy. I hope I'm not getting lost. One of the other things I'm trying to do, um, other than just do a whole lot more colors than I'm used to, I usually leave a lot of negative space, empty space. I'm going to try and fill a lot more of this time, see if I can do that. That's something I've wanted to experiment with for a long time, and again, something out of my comfort zone, so I'm going to see how that turns out. The next color that I have is bright green. I already have a little bit of that in here, but I'm putting some of that into the design. I'm thinking about putting it on the border on the outside. Let's see how it looks. Honestly, with this bright green on there, I really kind of like how this panel looks. Uh, I could have probably stopped with this for myself, but that wouldn't be the challenge. We're adding more colors to it. It's just not enough. Alright, I'm going to call this quits for the day. Let it dry. Good, because I'm having a hard time finding places to put my fingers where there's not wet paint. And we will come back to it tomorrow, hopefully. Give y'all a little taste of how it's looking so far. A little bit of close up there. You can start to see how those lines overlap each other. If we turn it to gray here, you can see even more how working from dark to light, none of those lines look like they're chopped by another color. They just get to have their entire flow to them this way. Um, it gives depth a little bit better, so you can kind of see that front to back with them where they're staggered. Uh, this is a good trick that you can do with your stuff. Take a picture of it and then either turn it to black and white with a filter or go to the saturation deal and pull all the saturation out so that you can see how those colors look. Trying something a little different here with the filming and maybe do a little bit of kind of stop motion deal here. You can watch the lightest color that I've got going in the last one building up okay I got all the colors that I started off with here go ahead and give you guys that final reveal <laughs> it's my finished product here on this please let me know in the comments what you think of this piece should I continue to do a whole bunch more colors or maybe dial it back a little bit right now I'm kind of thinking I'd like to keep playing with this a little bit more and get a little bit more mastery over working with a whole bunch of colors I learned a lot from this and I want to apply it to the next one all right Freddie's challenge that he gave me there really pushed me a lot on this uh, like I said I haven't done this many colors on a panel in a couple of years a um, lot going on a little bit different than the stuff that you guys normally see me doing but now's the time for me to give Freddy his challenge here so that he can uh, do this on his YouTube channel there. Again, that's via pinstriping if you guys go check him out. So, Freddy, if you're watching, <laughs> uh, I know you hate working on white. <laughs> so I want to see you work on a white panel. And then on top of that, I guess we're making it a two-part challenge here. i uh, like to see those cool Freddy scrolls. But let's see if you can do them in one or two colors. Just as crazy as normal but in a lot limited palette. I know you like the colors, so maybe that's an equal challenge. I think the second part I put on myself on this and that was getting rid of negative space. So I know you only gave me one part, but I'm stepping it up and giving you two, man. <laughs> if y'all like this, please check out uh, more videos on my channel. There should be one that pops up on each side. And like I said, go check out Freddy's. I like doing this. I think maybe we should do some more challenges out there. Y'all let me know down in the comments at the bottom if you think so. Thanks.